there's another process in between the failure and the lesson learned that you have to take to take that failed lesson and turn it into a lesson learned. Right. And and so I have a hard time, you know, with that challenge yeah. and the pattern breaking. Welcome to Tapping Creativity, a podcast for the creative community. Yes, it's a podcast for you. Whether you're looking for insight, inspiration, or community, you found yourself in the right place. My name is Matthew Temple. I am the host. And on this podcast, we go into questions, inspirations, challenges of the creative process. There, It's about connecting with other artists, hearing what other people are struggling with, their wins, their challenges. If you like what you hear, make sure you subscribe, follow, share. If you really like what you hear, give us a thumbs up or give us some kind of review. And with that, let's hop into this week's episode. Hey, welcome to this week's episode of Tapping Creativity. And I'm really excited about this week's episode because uh, Vinny Potestivo is with us today. And Vinny, we have a few things in common. One is that we kind of got our creative start primarily in sort of visual media, film slash television, and that we've also both found great meaning in sharing the some of the insight and the things that we've learned through our years in doing in, in doing this work. Finney was EP of uh, one of the Real Housewives. If you've watched reality television, if you watch television period, uh, Vinny has probably touched some of the creative aspects of work that you've seen and or loved. So uh, Vinny, welcome to today's episode. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. So, you know, one of the things, uh, as, as we were just kind of like chatting before the show, and we kind of both made a little joke about, oh, well, that's one of the things about being in our 40s. It's fascinating because you, you were in it, you were getting your hands dirty, sort of every day being on set and all this stuff. And then at a certain point, there was, you know, a shift in, in your life. And I, I want to ask you about that shift, this work that you're doing now, and how and why that was inspired and why that inspires you to be coming on the show and talking about this today. Oh, yeah, I love that question. Um, and as you're asking that question, I'm getting, I'm getting this visual of like little Vinny. First off, I'm born and raised here in New York, um, I, originally from Staten Island, now live in Brooklyn, which means like I've watched the New York City skyline change and I could watch buildings be created and launched. And unfortunately, I've seen them come down and, and, and most of them I've seen, you know, get to be built up. And I, I just love the process. I love the process of, of creation and and I think that being at MTV when I was at MTV from from the late '90s to about like 2007, I, I watched the process. I watched I watched the talent brands get built in front of me. Now I'm not saying I was a person building talent brands, you know, and at, right out of my 20s. Although I get a lot of credit sometimes, and and, and I, I juggle with um, if, if that if I if that credit is due. But either way, I was in the room. I got to be part of those conversations, and, and more importantly, I was called on to be creative. And, uh, and like, like you, what I think is cool about the beginning sort of parts of our career being sort of corporate creatives is we truly were paid to fail right. actually. Like it's very hard to tell people create, prepare to fail. It's very hard for me to tell entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, business owners to go out there and, and plan on failing. It's very hard for me to do that by the way. And I, I, and then you can sit there and you can try to convert it into there's no failures, there's lessons learned. But there's another process in between the failure and the lesson learned that you have to take to take that failed lesson and turn it into a lesson learned. And, right. And and so I have a hard time, you know, with that. So you have a hard time with it, but at the same time, you almost sound like I guiltily try and tell people like you actually just have to go out and fail. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Well, you know, there's there's safe ways to fail. Okay, yeah. to be honest. I think we learn, you know, to fall, you know, with our hands in front of us to protect our faces. We learn, and some of that is taught to us by our parents, if we're lucky. Yeah. And some of it we learn, you know, the hard way. Some of it is about, um, you know, knowing when to look before you leap. And some of it is knowing that in a safe space where, where you can leap without needing to know where you're going to land. And so, some of that is instinct, you know, and, and then I think some of it can be learned and some and the way it's learned is by by surrounding yourself with people who have complementary skills. Right. Ultimately, I, I find myself in a creative world. I was a database guy like I, I wanted to be a casting director. So in, in 98 in college, I took out an ad in backstage 
And I said, you know, I'm going to be a Vinnie Padestivo Entertainment. And I'm starting my casting files. If you'd like to be in projects, send me your headshots and resumes. And I got like 500 headshots and resumes sent to my college, which was so fun. And, and I didn't know what to do. So I created a database. Like I just thought, go to Excel and Microsoft Access and put it all together so I can email everybody. You know, this is kind of before newsletters and mail lists and all that kind of existed. And, and it was that database that, and that ability to organize talent and casting, that process that caught the eye of a couple of producers at Fox News. And I got to work on Hannity and Combs. Um, and I got to tour the country as like a 20 year old learning about politics through the lens of Sean and, and Hannity and Combs. And, and I got to interact with the people so I, I never traveled. I'm from New York. Everyone, when you're from New York, everyone comes, you know, you think, right. <laughs> you think traveling is like, you know, when they pass through New York, oh yeah, it's cold. It's so cultural. We get to see everything. We go everywhere yeah. without needing to go anywhere. And it was exciting to get to travel and do that. And then, and then when MTV was ready to create its talent development department, like I wasn't hired because of my casting, you know, ability. I was, I don't think I was at least, I think I really give a lot of credit to the fact that. I knew how to wire two VCRs together to edit in an office because I, I knew that was a unique skill set because I went around to a couple of executives offices while like my, my first like six months at MTV wiring their VCRs the way that we wired our VCRs. And I had, you know, technology skills that that most creatives did not have the way that we most most of us who have technical skills are now learning sort of a lot of creative skills because we suddenly have access to these to these cameras and editing suites in our iPhones. So now now we're creative, you know, by way of of access to tools. Um, I kind of was creative at, despite my tools. Now, nowadays, people are, are creative because of, you know, the tools that are yeah. provided to them. Yeah. So you said like you hate telling people that like to yeah. me, I kind of I'm the other like I love it. I'm like, you know what? Like failing is what you have to do. I was just in Germany. I was with my best friend and his, his daughter is applying to uh, do this like program abroad for a year and she has to write, sit down and write something uh, for it. And she was just like, she was stuck. And I was like, well, you're stuck because you want to write something good, you know? And so why don't you just write something really bad and embarrassing? I prob I promise you I'll be the only person to see it, you know? And then like, she just, she really struggled and I had to, I was writing something too. I was something I had to put together. So, and I was writing by hand. I left my, my computer here and I wrote by hand and I wrote this whole thing and it's just like all X'd up. Like the first two paragraphs, I just like, they're, they're bad. They're just not good. <laughs> and like, that's a form of failure of like sitting down and gonna write something bad. And that's a small little form. And then the next form of failure is you're like, Oh, I've completed this manuscript. Where I wrote my screenplay and now I'm going to like give it to a producer. Um, or if you're lucky enough to, you know, be in that world, or if you're not so much, you're going to submit it to contests. And then guess what? The next failure is when you've written your first screenplay, it's probably not very good. And you're going to send it out and you're going to get a whole lot of failure. And, and it's just engaging and being like, you know what, that's totally okay. Like, am I doing this so that I can get somewhere? Or am I doing this so that I can do this? Like, if I love sitting down and writing screenplays, then, I mean, I obviously at some point I wanted to sell it and I want to make it because, you know, that's just the nature of it. But if I really love make, writing, then it's okay if I sit here and write and it's okay if I send it out and somebody just doesn't like it or it gets optioned and doesn't get made or whatever, like, oh, that's okay. You know, and we can look at those generally things in this, like it's a little bit of a failure, right? Like I wrote this thing and I sent it out and now it's going to, you know, sit on my hard drive somewhere and it's never going to see the light of day again. And I just, I, on one side, we think of that as a failure, but really it's not because if you're a creative person, you're creating, then failure is actually already kind of impossible. So it's a little bit of like a, you know, it's a little bit of a semantics game. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's a little bit of this thing of, okay, it's, uh, what do you want to say? It's like, um, it's very sort of, um, ambiguous, right? It's dichotomous. It can mean a lot of like one thing is true and the opposite is true. Um, but I've kind of really grown to love that to be like, I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to do this work because I love doing it. Um, and also because I love getting better. And the only way I get better is by actually doing stuff that's not good. You know, it's like, and that's why you have like one hit wonders because someone's like, I did it. I'm great. And it's like, no, 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 oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. You're not great yet. You like, you had a, a moment of inspiration and it came through, but now you actually have to show up and do the work, you know? 
And if you believe that somehow you're just don't have to do the work in order to create great work, well, then th there's a pretty good chance that you're either not going to create anything. You're going to have your one big hit or, or, you know, or whatever. And then you're going to kind of like disappear a little bit. Does that ring yeah. for you? Yeah. If all? you're not in terms of one hit wonders, if you're, if, if all you can hear is yourself and your, and your wins and you can't hear the, uh, the honest applause or feedback of the people. Yeah, I, I see how one hit wonders out of the gate are uh, are just set, sort of set for doom. And there's this, some of that is um, having overprotective teams. Some of that is having disconnected teams um, or being disconnected just in general from from the, the artwork itself. Um, I love editing. <laughs> Woo. It's bad for a podcaster to like editing because oh, yeah, you're supposed bad. to be able to like get these out. And I could like nitpick. You know, I have 20 years of interviewing people for these TV shows. That I've, I've ma I want to say masterfully removed my voice from so that all that's left is their voice, their narrative. And it's, and it's, it's an actual enjoyable five minute reel that. You know, if I'm casting the Housewives of New Jersey, for example, um, for that, we start with their house. So we go to their house and we have them give us a tour of their house. And I ask them questions about what's it with that? What's this? Where'd you get this? What's this from? Who gave you this? Well, tell me about the story about this. And I, I'm just able to learn a lot about people, you know, in their own environment and, and, they're, and they're in their own environment as well. So I've learned to edit my voice out. Um, also, I'll say this as a gay man in the media, I learned to edit my voice out in my early 20s. Um, and I think that, that there, unfortunately, there was part of that culture that whether I had to or not, I did. And it was part of my success. Um, and then part of the reason why I left to continue to empower voices outside of that ecosystem that I was in. Um, failure just feels so linear. And I've seen so many failures turn into wins and nothing changed other than time. Right. So for me, I hate to get into sort of like mind shift, you know, mindset stuff because I'm so a work in progress. But I, I would say this, that the 19 year old version of me that learned that I'm a horrible storyteller, <laughs> that I tell the worst stories about my own self and I made myself a villain in my own stories. When I learned that, I was empowered to help people change their stories. And I did that. I happened to be at a place where there was video cameras. I happened to be at a place where there was a publishing, you know, a, a grid. And I happened to all work out where I can help people change their lives creatively and air it. And MTV did something magical by creating the space to air stories creating the space and then by the way, and then, and then, and then re-airing them a hundred times <laughs> afterwards too. <laughs> but that was cool. That was cool to see storytelling sort of take, take space. I, I, reality TV sort of gets a bum rap and people have questioned the reality or not. I question most people's decisions that they make in their lives off or on camera. <laughs> so like, I want to kind of step back because that's something that you, I know you talk about is kind of, kind of creating your kind of personal brand. If you had said that to me 15 years ago, even 10 years ago, probably I'd been like, this guy's not for me because I don't want to just be some brand. I'm like a human being. I'm multifaceted. I'm blah, 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 right. <laughs> but like right. all that's talking about is be really, really clear, like no. So you can articulate a hundred percent. Who am I? What I? What am I? You know, how am I going to bring what I have inside of me out into the world? Because I can't do it in five million ways. I can't do it in twenty ways. I can yeah. do it in very few ways. And really, at the end of the day, it's going to be, it's going to be the one way. And if I'm trying to kill eighteen birds with one stone, I'm not going to get a single one of them. Yeah, well, I think some of it too is as part of a personal brand development. It, I think it's it's less about. Um, uh, what are the types of brands and what are we you know, monetize and what are ways that collaborate? It's, it's less of that. It's more about how, how are you set up to work with brands to further your, further your list of goals. And I, I think to your point about the goals always changing. Yeah. Uh, the, I think the intent, uh, dictates the impact. I think that if your intent is laser focused and laser sharp that that and that's what propels your goals, your values. That's what helps you decide 
when to turn left, when to turn right, when to slow down, when to ramp it up, you know. Uh, in, in reality TV, we, we might call that like a story engine or a character engine. Uh, a story engine, um, for example, in, in the Osbournes would be you've got a, a husband and wife, so there's a relationship there. Then there are parents and kids, so there's the relationship that way. And then there's kids. <laughs> So there's three great story engines that I know we can pull story from in that. And no matter where we go, what happens, I'm always going to say through the lens of this couple, through the lens of this family or through the lens of these siblings, I'm going to understand like sort of like what's happening here. For me, talent development is very similar. It, it's not just making yourself open for the possibility of working with brand, these brands, but it, it's the intent of building a platform of building tools so that you you can be doing that by the way with or without those brands like when you go in to pitch a tv show you don't really you don't really ask i don't know maybe this is like a this is i have to think think about how to say this but like i i was trained and taught and in the room and, and the way i've sold tv shows has never been i would like to create a tv show i would like you to buy it here's what the show is about i've never had that conversation the conversations usually go more like this is an awesome show here's how we produce it here's how it's going to happen here's why we're doing it here's what happens afterwards here's how we would produce 100 episodes but never at any point am i asking i mean i'm obviously this is a sales conversation and i'm telling you this stuff because i want you to buy it but I, I would almost never give permission to let one single question make me feel like I failed. And that goes all the way back to like how we say like setting up for failure. It's, I say the words now or yet. And generally speaking, it'll turn any fail into a, just a, a time sensitive, a time paused win, <laughs> if right. anything. And I, I realized that the, the, I could say that because as a 19 year old, I thought I was running out of time and I did things that allowed me to do in my 20s that I thought I was running out of time in 29 when I left MTV to do what I'm doing now. And each of those sort of decades that I've, I've been in, in media too, I've seen these cycles come through and I, I, I believe them. And I also believe in the law of abundance. I mean, the law of abundance and the law of attraction as well. Um, so, as, so you, you, as a casting you, Well, that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's, I think that's really important. Um, and, and use this thing of, of like, it's a win on pause. I th that I think is is also really key because this whole thing and you said kind of alluded to earlier like I'm a work in progress and so like really when there are challenges that are going to always come along and those challenges can feel a bit defeating right mm -hmm. and then at the same time it's like well I mean I presume you go to the gym sometimes at least right there was a time <laughs> there was a time sometimes or working from home it's just like you can't go to the gym and be like you know I'm just going to use these two pounders because you're not right. going to build up any muscle, you know, you right. can build up the muscle when you're like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to grab a 25 pounder and you know what, after maybe I can only do three of those today and my arms are going to hurt like hell for the next three days. But without that resistance, without the challenge, then we're not going to, we're, we're not going to be able to build the muscles that, that yeah. we need. Challenge like, and the pattern breaking too, you know? Oh, talk about that pattern breaking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the idea of going to the gym. I mean, it's not something that I do um, ritually or routinely anymore. Um, but uh, I do have my momentary moments of, of health beyond just walking my dogs. <laughs> that's going to make it that's going to help everybody feel so much better because we all know that that's actually like for like 99% of us. That's actually the truth, especially being a podcaster or, or, or working virtually. You know, I actually felt guilty. Especially if I worked out harder, I felt guilty that I wasn't working when I know I could be helping somebody one on one. So I, sometimes I would get that that sort of like uh, like I feel like, I, you know, this is too much for me and I need to be you know out there for other people. Although the stronger I am, the stronger I can help, you know, other people be themselves, too. You know, so. Oh, I was going to say um, I couldn't go to the gym. So I had a. I had to just watch what I ate. I actually changed my input. Like the input dictates the output. So if you're if you're watching crap TV, you're gonna make maybe really good crap production. Yeah. If you're making high quality, if you're if you're taking in format, I mean, you really just need to be aware of, of storytelling. But the input does dictate the output, and that's 
that's creatively, you know, as, as well as, you know, um, spiritually and financially. So I love that. Um, it all blends, it all yeah. blends. It's all an emotional process. It's very true. And so you just mentioned systems. I'm going to kind of grab onto that for a moment. I think it was in high school we were studying about Einstein and that the universe has a boundary. And I'm not a physicist and I don't understand it. And if you are, if someone's listening and you're a physicist, just give me a break and let's run with this for a second. (laughs) The universe doesn't go outside of a boundary. And I remember the drawing of the shape of the universe looked kind of like a a, uh, saddle on a horse. And I remember being fascinated by that idea that there's a boundary to infinity. Like that's actually kind of cool because... I was also then thinking about all these things, like I want to be able to do everything or anything or everything as possible. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like one of the things about being human is that we actually do have boundaries. We are limited and that's not a negative thing. The limits are really, really important. I forget which artist it was that said, like, if you want to screw over an artist, give them like, you know, every color imaginable on a palette and say, go paint something. It's like, there's a boundary to your universe. That way, when you hit up against, you can be like, oh, okay, I'm hitting up against this. I know I can now kind of continue to move within this wide universe because I have some limits or I have a system. And so what is your, how do you work with that? Yeah, a system for me, I think is like uh, sort of like uh, another word for like cooperation agreement <laughs> or collaboration understanding. Like with yourself, you mean almost? It could be with yourself. It could be it's the system for me is first off establishing time. So to, to go back to your thing, I thought you were going to say, you know, the best way to screw up an artist. You said is to give them all the colors. I thought you were going to say is to give them an extension. <laughs> <laughs> that's another right, good. It's, that's it's, another it's, good it's way to tomorrow. do it. Actually. Okay, cool. Hey, how about we'll give you another week? And you're like, uh, uh, okay, we'll take it and we'll edit it. Well, <laughs> but yeah. you know, some people, so timing sure is it, sure is a tricky beast. Yeah, having a system for me helps me understand how much time I have to systematically talk about the things that I want to be talking about. That I'm educating myself and I'm thinking of top line ideas that are informing blog posts that are informing the conversation I'm having in podcasts, whether as a guest or as a host, that are informing the social media output of that month. And I don't feel rushed to get everything that I wanna talk about and stand for out in one single post or in one single month. And I'd rather move the needle to at least 60%, anything past 50 I'm happy with, 60% is is to me where action takes place. Mm. That's where community comes together, where new words take new meaning, when there's a a general larger consensus and understanding of a new fact or a new phenomenon or a new trend. And that's something I used to be able to do in broadcasting with MTV, but with the youth culture, so with our, our very specific audience. And it's kind of what I love about this narrow casting world of social media and podcasting and, and all the ways, you know, um, sub stack and like sort of micro blogging in the way that we're, commu- you know, we're communicating now. And, and all of that sounds to me overwhelming. I need a system to be able to understand how something that I do on TikTok benefits a platform relation a relationship with good pods that I have. And what, why I do what I do is because I know the longer I can keep you in here, the longer I can have you tasting success and being part of success and defining what success even is, the longer you'll stay creative and the longer you'll stay in my world. And I want you in my world. I want people who who share my energy or my words or compliment what I'm doing or create discord to what I'm doing. I, I'm, I want all of that around me. And if I can participate in it this way is, is the way that, you know, I, I know how. So the, the systems for me, for example, are winning awards. And you know this personally, there's no one walking around handing out Grammys. Yeah. You gotta be part of the institution. You gotta pay your dues. You gotta also pay for every single nomination. And there's campaigning that goes on. You want to be on an award-winning list and also credits. You know, on IMDb, for years, it's only been television and film. And up until recently, now they allow podcasts. So as a podcaster, I have the same ability to get the same credit as an executive producer, a producer, a writer, a director, a music supervisor, a music editor, um, also all of my guests, which means now that my credits for my guests turn into discoverability moments for me, because if I have 
cool guests on my podcast and I appear on their IMDb pages. And this is the creator economy that we're stepping into. So I can't think of a better place to have credits live. Plus IMDb and Google are like, yeah. by the way, I created something called uh, www.audiolinked.com and I'll send you this link too. It's just a free resource for people who, who are interested in onboarding their podcast to IMDb for free. And I want to tell you something. I, I have been casting off of IMDb for years. I, I, and if I need a, a lawyer to sit on a panel for a TV show, I will go to the daytime talk shows and I will see what legal correspondents have appeared. Interesting. Like that's yeah. the, you, the, we, because right. you're already media trained and you've been on high profile shows. You've been on a live show. You've been on a national show. So there's a couple of boxes, you know, that that. So you want to mm-hmm. be on IMDb, especially as this creator economy is sneaking up on us. Yeah. So those are some systems, cool. you know, are they yeah. scary? Yeah. You know, all you got to do is throw your name in the hat. <laughs> right. Because really those two systems are about just throwing your name in the hat. And that's something most creatives won't do because of shame or not knowing or, or like imposter well, syndrome or, yeah, right. or I feel like I'm so great and you know, because I actually believe in my work until I actually have to put it out there. And there's that moment yeah. of deep vulnerability. And we actually just, um, just did a kind of a mashup episode of, a of, uh, probably about five or six different artists uh, that I had on the show talking about that kind of like creative wounds and that vulnerability. And it was really kind of neat to go through and hear how different people over time was like, Oh, there's a theme there and pulling out this theme of, of that of like, Oh, I put my work out and it's crickets or it's slammed or nobody likes it or whatever. Or sometimes even worse is that like, you know, I got five friends like, Oh yeah, that's really good. (laughs) Yeah. 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 You're like, Ooh, that hurts. Um, The good space is a bad space to be in. (laughs) It's great or fail, but good is like, yeah. Ooh. mm, Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry. (laughs) So tell me a little bit, um, you worked in television production and EP shows, and now over time you found that you actually have these incredible resources that you're actually using always before to kind of help yourself in some ways. You're like, I'm an EP. I've got these, I'm basically, I'm working with people. I'm coaching them. I'm training them. I'm bringing them along. And so my job is like MTV or whatever studio or production company is paying me to do this work. And at the beginning, you probably were not very as good at it. But over time, you did it more and you did it more and you did it more while you were fortunate enough to be honing that skill while getting a paycheck from a major broadcaster. And then at a certain point, you said, okay, you know, but left MTV and it's doing this other work. And now you're, I know that part of the work that you do now is really helping others. And I think that's beautiful because that's like you were doing it before for MTV and now you're doing it for the individuals. You've got this, this thing where it's like, people can come to me. I don't have to be a real housewife in order to get to know and work with Vinny which is great because I would be a terrible housewife. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you Have you ever worked on your tagline before? <laughs> <laughs> I have not. Yeah, okay. Um, we'll work on that afterwards. That's okay. Good. Episode. <laughs> um, so tell me about that. Let, well, let's do, if that's one of the pieces, let's take that as an example. Give me a quick overview and then let's work on my tagline real quick. Just as an example, as we know some of this work that you're doing. Oh, yeah. I just I just really love helping people stand out. I think that the thing I got to do at MTV and the the stuff I got to see with, with NBC and a and all the networks and production companies that I've gotten to work with, I, I've just seen people leverage talent in multiple, multiple different ways. I've seen the same talent have multiple different shows. Uh, I think what I, I I think what I got good at was was figuring out what your it factor is. And for me, I think the it factor is sort of like something in the center of you that balances out a couple of intersections. You know, the thing that the thing you're and, and if the it factor is fascinating or unique or exotic in the context of the conversation, that to me is how people have the ability to stand out. So if you're um, a five time Guinness world record, uh, breath holder and a public speaker to me, the breath support and the Guinness thing gives you just enough 
of of maybe I would imply I would imply and here's all the implications, right? I would imply that you put focus into that. I would imply that you sought after that. I would imply that, you know, there was there'd be all these reasons that I would sort of come up with. And I loved helping people figure out their intersection. A lot of people are trying to figure out uh, you know, the thing they do and simplify to the easiest way, niche down and simplify what they what they are. And that's that's a hard process. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, that's a hard process. Uh, it takes me a couple of hours in an interview to really sort of hear the word that you're you're saying that you're not really don't want me to land on, but but it, it, it you know but it is what it is so to speak. I think it's also I think it's about matching up um, where you're at now with the future version of you um, and how that's and how that supports it and what that journey what that journey could look like in collaboration with you as a producer and then also in a, a, as an audience member like just figuring out what you're you know what what you're all about but i love i love playing an intersection um so can you give me a tagline for somebody that either that you've worked with a client of yours or a or a celebrity that we might know like what does that sound like in the real world <laughs> uh yeah how's life life is a journey and i'm finding mine every day you know i think is uh was was kim was kim richards Tagline. I think Lisa Vanderpump from from Housewives of Beverly Hills famously said, "I am passionate about dogs, just not crazy about the B word." Okay. <laughs> um, and 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 she is an animal activist who also does not enjoy the negative female camaraderie that the of, of late uh, on Housewives. Okay. So like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Bethany Frankel actually had a really funny one once. Uh, I'm not a housewife, but I am real. <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's sort of like a nod to it's almost like a play on an idiom or a lyric that exists and this is sort of i've i've always loved naming either my shows exactly what they are like grossly literal my podcast is called i have a podcast yeah uh the wade robson show is called the wade robson dance project the ashley simpson show is called the ashley simpson show like i'm terribly direct sometimes yeah. when, I have I a want, podcast. <laughs> when i want you to know what it is you're getting you know what i mean and 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 i didn't get into podcasting thinking i would love podcast guesting i thought i would like podcast hosting more but i woo, it's well of course it's more. It's always more fun to go to the party than to throw the party, right? Yeah, right. Yes, right. <laughs> it depends. It depends. Unless you're that one friend who has like you know all the photo albums but no photos because you're the also you also have a camera. And <laughs> that's that's also me too. You know but that thank friend. Thank you so much say. for this. Thank you so yeah. much for this. This is awesome. So this was great. <laughs> Thanks again. And once again, for uh, for all you listening out there, make sure to uh, check the show notes. Some great resources. And uh, have a great creative inspired week. See you next time. Tapping, Tapping Creativity, creativity is, brought is brought to you in part, part by, by We Strive, Strive a non-profit organization that works to lead the world towards stronger, healthier, and more sustainable, and more sustainable, sustainable community. community. We Strive, we Strive is currently at an exciting, exciting juncture, juncture in that in coming out of, out of the pandemic, pandemic it, is it is in a place, place of looking, looking to see how, how can it now, now as a established, established organization, organization be of greatest, greatest support, support to the, the creative communities as well as communities who are striving in any way they know how to, to engage, engage in, in co-creating co a, a better world. world. If you're, if you're interested, interested in learning, learning more, more visit, visit, visit strive.org. Strive